Nottingham Forest entertained Wimbledon in early November 1995. For Forest fans, the season couldn't have gone much better in the early stages. Their side could go third if they beat the Dons, they'd progress to the next round of the UEFA Cup after knocking out Auxerre, and they were still unbeaten in the Premiership after 11 games. It was a very different story for Wimbledon. They'd lost their previous six league games, conceding 18 goals along the way, and were languishing in 17th place in the league. Forest manager Frank Clark kept faith with the same 11 that had drawn one all with Queen's Park Rangers in their last league fixture. Old heads Stuart Pearce, Steve Chettle and Colin Cooper provided great experience at the back to complement the skills of Dutchman Bran Roy in attack. Joe Kinnear made three changes to the Wimbledon team that had lost at home to Southampton. In came Simon Tracy in goal, Andy Thorne in defence, and Vinnie Jones in midfield. He captained the side. Out went Paul Heald, Scott Fitzgerald and Stephen Tallboys. Paul Alcock was the man with the whistle. Your match commentator is Peter Brackley. This is Gary Elkins with Wimbledon attacking the goal to our left in their dark strip. Forest, of course, in their famous red tops. Des Little, who's been playing so well at right back for them this season. Leonardson with the cross. Or rather, uh, Elkins with the cross. This is Stuart Pierce. Captain of the Forest team. Roy making the run through the middle. And here's an early chance for Forest. It's a good tackle, though, by Chris Perry. And my word, it was a vital one, too. Repercussions among those Wimbledon defenders. They got their bearings totally wrong then as Roy outpaced them and outthought them too, but he couldn't find the right finish. Off goes Leonardson, being policed there by Ian Wohn, who does give Price such good balance down the left side. Des Little. Now Jason Lee is keeping Salenzi out of the team. Little again, Chris Bart Williams, who has really the anchor role in midfield alongside Scott Gemmell. Kenny Cunningham up towards Holdsworth. And he was tanking there with Steve Chettle. And referee all cork has blown in favour of Forrest. Cunningham with the back pass. And Simon Tracy with his first touch. He had been Sheffield United's first choice at the start of the season, but then lost out to Alan Kelly. Now here he is on loan, and he might be called into the action now. There's Brian Roy with the shot, and it wasn't far wide either. Slip has led in now, Scott Gemmell, and surely a goal, oh, and what a goal it was too from Brian Roy. An audacious piece of finishing by the Dutch Maestro, and Nottingham Forest had the lead. All stem from a mistake by Leo Nardson, tangling there with Scott Gemmell, whose persistence kept him going, and no one has picked up Brian Roy. But having said that, it was such an elegant finish. Nine minutes gone. And the confidence there of Brian Roy was simply devastating. Oh, what a goal. Goal number six then for him this season, his fifth in the Premier. Holdsworth. This is Marcus Gale. Good, strong harassing though by Des Little. He really has improved enormously over the recent seasons. Since stripping out of the game into non-league football for a while. Brian Roy, a star in the past, of course, with Ajax and with Fodger in Italy. Here's Jones, one of those prodigious throws of his. Stone with a clearance. 
Well knocked on by Brian, uh, by Lee to Brian Roy. Barged aside by Elkins. Nothing wrong with that though. Well, no, in fact, the referee has given the free kick. I thought it was shoulder to shoulder, but the referee all caught didn't see it that way. Little with the free kick. He looked for the strength of the end of Jason Lee, but he was impeding that as he clashed with Andy Thorne. Jason Lee, who's been quick to point out he doesn't consider himself a replacement for Stan Collymore, or, for that matter, just a stand-in for Kevin Campbell till he's fit again. He feels he deserves his place on merit. And in fairness to him, he has been playing well. The challenge by Gemmell. Here's Pierce. Away from Cunningham. He's done well to win it back as the Wimbledon defender. Now, young Jason Newell. Elkins. This is Gale. Holdsworth. Now Ewell, threading his way through. Well, he's been a, a prolific scorer in junior football at the club. Jason Newell. Scored 53 goals in 49 league games in the youth side last season. Elkins then with the corner. And Wimbledon have responded with a goal from Vinnie Jones. A perfect reply from Wimbledon. No cause is ever lost for them. And they've clawed their way back in decisive fashion. Just three minutes after Roy's opener for Forrest, Vinnie Jones has made it 1-1. Forrest will be unhappy about their marking. No one really in close attendance as it was potted home by Jones. Elkins and Stone together again. On by Leonardo for Dean Holdsworth. Holdsworth confident that's a corner. And the referee concurs. Dean Holdsworth with eight goals this season. That's already more than he managed in the whole of the last campaign. And he had his differences with the club. He was stripped of the captaincy, I remember, early on. Elkins will take the kick. Out by Little, but not too far. It's Leonardson. Charged out by Wood. Little. It goes Perry. Cooper's clearance. That was a fine one, too, to find Brian Roy. Now off goes Jason Lee, all stemming from that excellent pass out by Cooper. Little chip to Wound. Tracy save. Wimbledon looking aghast there. They expected a linesman flag for offside. And I must say it looked that way. And surely he's off it. Well, you could say that Wimbledon should play to the whistle, play to the flag. But he did look off, surely he won't. And Wimbledon will feel that justice was done anyway. And the Forest fans taking it out on Vinnie Jones, who was leading the protests. And Thorne has been cautioned, presumably for dissent. Yeah, Jones as well. Now is Earl getting involved too? This is all rather silly. Well now Forrest have a free kick just outside the penalty box. And it's certainly within range for Stuart Pierce. Will this be another of those thunderbolt drives of his? As an amateur player, I was never very brave, and you certainly wouldn't get me standing in that wall. At least this time it's not a fast bowler's run-up from Pierce. Referee Alcock just making sure the wall is the requisite distance away. 
Shettle has placed himself just in front of it. <laughs> Here is Pierce. It's there. Fresh command is restored. Another thumping shot from Stuart Pierce. And these venomous drives of his are so hard to defend. Defenders converging on him, but such is the force of the shot, it's whistled past Simon Tracy. And by the time he'd reacted, it was already in the back of the net. 32 minutes gone, Forest 2, Wimbledon 1. Bart Williams, wide for Wone. Here's you. Grant straight into Gamble. There could be problems now for Wimbledon. He's got Wone here. Wone with the shot. Off the bar. Stone coming in. Couldn't quite capitalise on it. Another escape then for Wimbledon. Wone with the shot against the crossbow. Leonardson on the break for Wimbledon. But offside against Robbie Earl. But certainly they were sliced open then, Wimbledon. A flowing, cohesive move from Price. And almost finished off by Ian Wone. Wone's pass to find Steve Stone. Now Little. Spun away off Elkins. Lee to Bart Williams. No, he's left it for Pierce. And it was Pierce from Pierce yet again. Does love a crack at goal, Stuart Pierce. Certainly relishing Forest European campaign for all his years of service. He's never featured in club football in Europe before. Cooper almost let in Earl there. Pierce combining with Roy. Oh, and some nifty footwork then by Roy until he's confronted illegally by Jones. He's already been cautioned. And it's a red one now. And Vinnie Jones, for the 11th time in his career, has been dismissed. And you can't really feel that he has any cause for complaint. Maybe Joe Kinnear will, but... Yeah, it's a rueful smile from the manager. Roy was away, and he was clattered by Jones. Jones was also sent off in the game against Liverpool earlier in the season, but that one was overturned and made into a yellow card on appeal. When it did transpire, there had been a mistaken identity. In fact, Thorne was sent off. He came back on. I don't know what Joe Kinnear made of all that. But he's certainly got problems now. Back to the drawing board, Joe. Oh. And there is the half-time whistle. And you would certainly feel it's going to be hard work from Wimbledon to turn this round in the second half. That's the way of it now at the city ground. Big smile from Brian Roy. Price to leading by two goals to one. Perry with the back pass. Well, Joe Kinnear, I'm sure, has had some words of wisdom to stir up his players during the interval. Certainly some sympathy being expressed around the ground in some quarters for Vinnie Jones. It was a bookable offence, the second one, but maybe the referee might just have shown a bit of discretion and said, well, does it warrant a sending off? certainly put a damper on Wimbledon's plans, on their tactical plans for tonight. Without the hard-tackling Jones in midfield. And they'll miss his long throws too. Forward by Chettle, up goes Lee, and Gemmel! And it was just hooked away from him at the last end by Gary Elkins. Very much Wimbledon's saviour then. 
defender Gary Elkins. It's another good climb by Lee. Knocked down invitingly towards Gemmel, but Elkins able to tip it away. But the pressure stays on the Wimbledon goal. Won with the corner. And Lee's in there. 3 1. Some very careless defending, you would have to say, there by Wimbledon. And Lee able to nip in. The goal coming just two minutes into the second half. Curled over there, the corner. And well, no one in a blue top has managed to get to it before Jason Lee. And there were certainly plenty of defenders around. Holdsworth did well to keep that in play. Off goes Marcus Gale. Striding purposefully forward. Good strike too. But straight at Mark Crossley. Good positioning by the goalkeeper. But it was another forceful run by Marcus Gale. Stone. Hugging that touchline. And he's in full flow here. Away from Perry. A little injection of pace. Here's Jason Lee! His first touch maybe just not true enough. I think he'll be the first to admit that. But what a great break then by Steve Stone. Bursting past Chris Perry. He's a lot quicker than he looks, Stone. And he's pulled it back invitingly for Lee. Again, the marking is not too tight until he is eventually closed down by Thorne. Leonardson alongside him. He's got Gale away to his left. Holdsworth through the middle and young Jason Yule. Here is Gale again. Looking to extend as little. Up goes Yule. Lee. Swapping passes with Steve Stone. Gemmel. Who's become a central figure now in midfield Gemmel since the departure of Lars Bohinen. Here's Pierce again. On for Brian Roy. Offside. For a moment then, Roy thought he'd scored again. And the linesman absolutely right. Certainly Brian Roy was offside, probably Lee as well. Holsworth. This is Gale. Leonardson making another promising run forward, still Leonardson, and he's forced the corner. Involved really in both the first two goals, that free kick of Pierce ricocheting in off him, and it was he that presented the ball to Scott Kemmel, when the young Scotsman laid on the opener for Bright Roy. Elkins with the corner. Dealt with by Little, but there's Leonardson through! And Crossley got down extremely well. I wouldn't have thought Mark Crossley had too good a view of that. Maybe a deflection on the way too. A snapshot from Leonardson. That's the header up by Little. Stone to Pierce. Stone once more. Trying to slip it into the path of Little. He's made something of it. Here's Lee! Not this time. That's twice now he's got into very promising situations set up for him. And with clinical finishing, Frank Clark's team would have had another goal. Not showing too much emotion there, Frank Clark. But deep down, he'll know that surely Jason Lee should have done better with that. Now... Mick Harford is going to come on. Now 36 years old. In fact, there's a double substitution. Marcus Gale is going off. So is Holdsworth. And Andy Clark is the other substitute.
Art Williams trying to guide it on, but Cunningham playing it out to Robbie Earl for Wimbledon. Good anticipation by Stone. Wimbledon could be in trouble here. Salenzi. There's no one in the middle, though. Not with a red shirt on, anyway. Maybe Salenzi had more time than he thought then to look up and see what was available in the middle. Certainly were players coming in. This is Andy Clark. Gary Elkins, Clark continuing his run. But there's Cooper to cover. Cooper, of course, who made his England debut in the Umbro Cup back in the summer. Salenzi, who's had one cap for Italy. Elkins with a throw then for Wimbledon. Still trailing by three goals to one. And not offering really too much of a sign that they can pull it round. They've come into the game tonight hoping to provide an upset. Hoping to become the first side to beat Nottingham Forest in the Premier League in 25 outings. But it's not really looking if it's going to happen. Well, there may be... Well, Leon Hudson had other ideas then. Forcing a great save out of Mark Crossley. Really acrobatic then. It's a super little run by Leon Hudson. The Norwegian drifting into space, and before Cooper can close him down, he looked to be curling that into the corner until Crossley, showing his agility, came flying across. Don't think you could label him cumbersome then. So Lenzi's clearance. Picked up though by Cunningham initially, then Harford to Leonardson. Cunningham again. This is Andy Clark. But it needs a much better service than that if Wimbledon are to extend Crossley again. Cooper. Another commanding game at the back from him tonight for Nottingham Forest. Bart Williams to Pierce. This is Wone. Now Gemmel. Forest also have another Norwegian, Alf Inge Holland, on the bench, along with the young striker Paul McGregor. Pierce. Roy was the target. How tidily he controlled that then. Little chip through for Salenzi. And also for Stone. And there's Gibble! 4 1. Such a well constructed goal then by Nottingham Forest. And no wonder there's a beaming smile from Scott Gibble. That's his first goal of the season. And it was laid on superbly by the cross from Stone. The goal coming just eight minutes from time and surely now has sealed another success for Nottingham Forest. Andy Clark. Leonardson. Harford swinging, still Leonardson. Wriggling through. The whole posse of Forest defenders around him and eventually it's cleared. On by Robbie Earl. Stamped out by Little. This is Steve Stones. Still beavering away. But he's caught by Andy Clark. And it's all over. Nottingham Forest have now extended their unbeaten run in the Premier to 25 matches. The final score, 4-1. An impressive win for Frank Clark's team that suggested they possess the credentials for a title challenge. 
But after a season of great early promise, their long unbeaten run came crashing to an end when they were thrashed 7-0 by Blackburn in their very next league fixture. Forrest eventually finished the season in ninth place, which after such an impressive beginning was a disappointment for their supporters. Wimbledon, who'd been in all sorts of trouble at the wrong end of the table, did what Wimbledon used to do best. They battled and scrapped their way to Premiership safety, finishing the season in 14th position, three points clear of the drop zone. Their refusal to give up on any cause was a trademark of the team.